in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this i will say you are free but you see there are some that their, their marriage is a message to a generation how many of you have read about john wesley you know in america is recently that oral sex and anal sex was legalized in the days of john wesley i'm not talking pornography just to give you where the nation have declined from in the days of john wesley if it is heard that you got intimate with anybody in a way that is not designated by scripture you'll be jailed that is to show you the level of holiness that they brought to matters of intimacy i had to use the word so you know what i'm talking about but after this man died a point came they, there were no more gatekeepers and so now intimacy is not just legalized pornography is legalized abortion is legalized so the judgments and the laws are not passed in the senate they are passed on the altar what the senate deliberate on are the things that are permitted on the altar but you see when gatekeepers are no more there then philosophers will pass laws and the church will be forced to obey it meanwhile the powers that john wesley had in his era to do what he did there was a price he paid in his marriage somebody told a story that one day he visited and john wesley was being dragged in his house and when the wife showed up his hair was in the house his hand her hand so in the house the wife could slap him and kick him but he knew that for him to keep the witness of sacredness of purity of intimacy for a generation he had to die that death there was a time when after eight years the church had to say separate but they came back because for him it was a testimony to a generation so if you are talking to people who have a witness of intimacy of purity gatekeepers around the area of marriage what you will teach them about marriage is different from what you will share in the outer court so some of the things patrick was sharing is a message for martyrs so if you are not a martyr manage the philosophy you are managing until you grow up that's what i'm trying to say it's a word for those in the inner court and unfortunately until jesus come only few can live there because the way the, the, the tabernacle is designed there's no accommodation for crowd in the inner court so those who enter the bible said they press in until the time of joy said the kingdom of god is preached and they say men press in so you have to press your way in through sacrifice and it is those sacrifices that are called the ancient landmarks that's why when i was teaching you on sunday i was sharing some things with you i told you in salvation we are equal but in eternity when reward is given will be different the men who will beam the glory of god are those who will pay the price of intimacy in prayer in worship in fasting and those who will pay the price of participating in soul winning through prayer through giving and through going out he said in Daniel 12 verse 3 he said they that turn many to righteousness they shall shine like the brightness of the heavens that means my shine with your shine will not be the same we will all wear the garment of righteousness because that's what Jesus gave us but you see when it has to do with glory and illumination we will not be the same Paul said for this cause we groan we travail that we might be clothed he said as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered. So the Christians on earth today who only pray when they have needs, they may have answers, but they will never know the reward of prayer. Because the reward of prayer is not for those who seek answers. It's for those who seek glory. That's why Jesus said when you pray, lock yourself and travail because it's a transaction of glory. So you can go to heaven, one man will shine like the stars. Another one will be dim as though he was never redeemed. Because the extent of glory is a function of intimacy and soul winning. I told you, not all of us will wear crowns. Jesus speaking in Revelation 2.10. He said, you'll be arrested. You'll be in prison. After 10 days, you'll be killed. He said, but be faithful unto death. That means it's not in every corridor Jesus comes to save you. 
there are certain times he will allow you to go through the fire because only those who go through the fire qualify for certain rewards he said when you are killed he said you will receive the crown of life and i said it doesn't necessarily mean you'll be beheaded it means self-denial must become the badge of your life that's why paul said in first second timothy 4 7 and 8 i have fought a good fight it's a fight to refuse to compromise to refuse for pleasure and luxury and ease to take you away from things that have eternal relevance but you see how can you teach that in the in, in the outer court they will run away jesus was talking and he said if you must be saved you must eat my flesh and drink my blood the people say this is a hard saying and they ran away <laughs> meanwhile when jesus is doing miracles the multitude will come that's why i told you there are ministers who can manage the outer court and the inner court peter told he looked at them he said will you go to peter said to where with you is the word of eternal life and jesus looked at him you think he will encourage him he said anybody who wants to follow me must deny his father <laughs> must deny his mother must deny his wife must deny his husband and his children and even his own life ah, people are running would you encourage the one staying no the outer court is not a place where you seduce people to men press to enter there you press and that is the generation that can stand in the last day i'm telling you most of us we faint he said the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound he said many shall be deceived false prophets false christ will come promising lying wonders but the men who we go through are those who can stand regardless of what they face i told you not all of us we sit on thrones because throne is power for judgment in the world to come but jesus said these are they that have continued with me in my trials he said at the regeneration you will sit with me on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel and paul came to tell us it's not only a prerogative of the apostles he said do you not know that the saints shall judge the world that we shall judge angels but only those who sit on thrones can judge angels can judge the world but the bad is trials we are the christians who can endure trials the bible said some endured cruel persecution he said they didn't change their minds even when they were offered deliverance he said they rejected it that they will have a better resurrection is it this christian christianity of pampering people we can't raise such people i'm telling you if jesus is looking for warriors you will be shocked that many churches will not have one candidate including the general overseers and i'm not saying we qualify it's a grace that all of us will trust god for because you'll be amazed when the role is numbered those who will be counted will be few this is why we share things like this and he called it the ancient landmarks it was chronicled in hebrews chapter 11. he said through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god and the things which are were not made out of the things we do appear he said by faith the elders obtained a good report what was the substance of their faith hebrews 11 verse 5 we saw the first landmark they pleased god he said by faith enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because god had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased god what does it mean to please god you will need to x-ray the bible to understand what it means those are the landmarks so the fathers did not live to please men they live only to please god and if a generation we attain those landmarks then this must become the focus of our lives regardless of what we go through so long as god is pleased then our life counts the second landmark is the fear of god hebrews 11 verse 7 when you read the bible don't rush pay attention it will shape your destiny by faith noah being warned of god of things not seen as yet moved with fear the elders they sustain fear for god there are certain economies in god you can't enter until you fear him he said the secret things belong to god the things that are revealed belong to us but who are those who possess them he said it is those who fear god psalm 25 verse 14 they that fear him he said he will show them his covenants so the reason the fathers were custodians of the oracles of god is because the fear of god was their heaviest garment he said he will not judge after the sight of his eyes 
nor the hearing of his ears. You come to a level where you don't operate by facts. You operate by secrets. Secrets that are committed to you. The third landmark of the fathers is obedience to God. Hebrews 11 verse 9. Look at Abraham. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as a straight country, dwelling in Tabernacles. With Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. Next verse. Hmm. Go to the verse before. I beg your pardon. Verse 8. Let me read the host. He said, By faith, Abraham, when he was called, to go out into the place which he should after he received for an, to receive for an inheritance he obeyed and went out not knowing whither he went we don't obey god because there's a promise we obey god because it's the heritage of the saints even if you don't know the destination obedience is the destination even if there's no promise obedience is the promise the Bible said he didn't even know where he was going. Yet he carried his sons who were co-heirs with him of the promise. These are the landmarks of the fathers. We are a rebellious generation. We can't even keep the commandments of God. Even the personal ones God give us. You hear a person tells you that God told me to do this. But my brother, he know is you. God will help us. You are joking. You don't know the parts of the ancient. And that's why the things that the Bible speak of will remain a story to you for your lifetime. Obedience is a landmark. Number four, they lived with the consciousness of the blessing. So their confidence were the promises that God gave them. Their confidence was not anchored in men. Their confidence was anchored on what the Lord told them. Hebrews 11 verse 20. I'm showing you things. This is a, an era where when a man is boasting, he's boasting because his uncle is a senator. When a man is boasting, he's boasting because he has money in the account. We don't know the ways of the fathers. He said, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. This was their strength, the blessing. That's why they will never die until they transfer it. A man wants to die, he will keep his last breath. Gather down me, you sons of Jacob. I have a heritage to commit to you. This is our secret. We are not powerful because of the nation we live. We are not powerful because of the men we are connected to. We are not powerful because of the resources we possess. You never heard that these men gave cows, donkeys to their children. They laid hands of them and they transferred the aggregated blessings upon their lives. A man will tell his son, he say, go, I bless you with corn and wine. Where is it? I bless you with the dew of heaven. And these guys walked from nation to nation. They could not be subdued. Even nations where they were strangers, they dominated because there was the consciousness of the blessing. What is your confidence? Ask 30 Christians today what they are coming. You don't even need to ask them. Hear them talk, you will know. A man talks like a God. And when you check, his confidence is money. What a mundane life. When you check, his confidence is his experience. When you check, his confidence is who he knows and where he has gone to. We don't know the ways of the fathers. The fathers were men who were fortified because of the oracles of God. In Psalm 9, Romans 9 from verse 4, he said, who are the Israelites? Who are they? How do you define these men? Who are the Israelites? Are they men who are connected to people or to territory? He said, no. He said, to whom pertained the adoption? and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and service and they promise this was their confidence the things god promised them if you have not gotten to that point where it's what god told you or what the bible says that's your confidence you don't know the ancient landmarks and i can tell you this is not what is now obtainable in christianity number five what is the fifth landmark these men were worshippers of god hebrews 11 21 they prioritize worship unfortunately it's other religions now that value worship check some of the religions around you when they get to an office the first thing they do is they build a, 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 a worship center even in their personal house they build worship centers they can they, there will be crisis in a foreign land and you ask why they are fighting for a worship center to be built but a christian who cares you don't even have a prayer house. Is it a church you will build in your house? Rather, when we are even talking church, Christians are fighting. Why? 
because they think what we need is companies they will tell you how can that church be big there are no companies there shut up you don't know anything about civilization what do you mean by companies do you know how nations are built if it's all about companies why are all the kings of the earth trying to fraternize with the devil who told you you have any form of intelligence they are telling you company all the company you speak of how many staff do they have maybe you should go and check the payroll of many churches and then you will understand you said they should build bank how many staff do banks have some of the churches in this country have as much as 5,000 staff if you begin to check employers of labor I tell you aggregate them together there's no one that employs people more than church who told you church is a nuisance but we don't know is the heritage of the fathers Hebrews 11 21 I'm showing you these things so that you will value them don't let anybody brainwash you he said by faith Jacob when he was dying blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped leaning upon his staff even at, the, at his death the last thing that was recorded about this man was that he was worshipping they worshipped all their life and they transited to glory through the pathways of worship because that was the heaviest molecule of their existence he blessed his children and he leaned on his staff Abba Father Shalom, Shalom ah, what a way to live but you worship only when you come to church on Sunday that's not how to live your life the fathers were worshippers they woke up singing go and read their life for God's sake it will humble you Abraham kept hearing God like a friend every detail of their life they were communing with God as though God was their best friend and true to it God himself God Abraham his friend Moses will have details even of buildings including knots and boats because of the level of depths that they had with God but we have a generation where even the corporate worship designed to strengthen us men can participate in it call for video see those who will come even service people can't come because worship means nothing to us and that is why our spirit is weak and the devil uses us as a theater to manifest his powers find out how many christians are sick it looks as if men have become the theater for manifesting different types of sicknesses and there is an occupation now that studies these characteristics of sickness if they want to find cancer they carry men to the lab like lab rats to define different kinds of cancer different kinds of sicknesses we are like in vessels through which demons import things from hades to earth because a generation has no power in the spirit remove not the ancient landmarks what is the depth of your worship number six these men refused to put their confidence in the arm of flesh hebrews 11 24 he said when moses was come of age he refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter if you are the one it will be a big deal for you the governor is my friend and today you'll find pastors people who are criminals people who are apostles and ambassadors of immorality they come to church and we flung them on the altar just to show the world that we have relevance what a garbage type of relevance it's a shame people we can't tell the truth to the face they come with their iniquity and because we are hungry about validation we bring liars seductive agents to stand on the altar we stand with them we snap we are the ones posting it see i know the place of honor i honor fathers of faith i honor them but hear me i don't put my confidence in any man i've prayed to you before only god makes men i honor men from the depths of my heart but no man takes the place of God that's why no matter who you think you are the moment you want to play God to hell with you I walk away and I never look back nobody takes the place of God but we are weak because we have no relationship with God so our confidence comes from our affiliations with men with men with men and every time they bring reproach to the church we bring them to church they go out and do all kinds of nonsense pastors are going to clubs with popular singers pastors are bringing actors that are advocates of of, of sexual immorality
and they prioritize it, they bring them to church so that people think they are relevant. I would rather languish in obscurity, serving God in integrity than to have an association that does not promote God. The ancient landmarks. Nobody can add anything to God. It's God that adds everything to us. Unless you don't know the God you are serving. Or unless you have not been delivered from the, from the vanity of the flesh. Number seven. This man embraced affliction. Hebrews 11, 25, 26. He said Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than the pleasures of Egypt which was for a season. He chose affliction. All he needed to do was to obey the laws of Egypt, cooperate with Pharaoh and deny Israel. But the guy said no. He esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the pleasures of Egypt. We have a church where people can't go through affliction. You say fast. If somebody fast from morning till 12, he say his body is shaking. Is that the man who is sleeping in the cell? You say go out for so winning. They say they can't trek. You are joking. You can't trek. I have trekked until my shoe tore around. There was a time that was like 14 years ago. I went to church. The little money we had, we had to give to the babes that we were bringing to church. So those days, what you do is every week, maybe you go to a football field, buy football for them, and you bring a bus to bring them to church. But eventually, somebody will have an encounter. And so when church is over, we are paying transport fare for people. People line up. And I emptied myself. And I'm not using myself as an example. I'm just showing you the basics of this reality. And I was emptied. By the time I finished, all the, min the leaders had gone. I had to trek home 8.30. I got home by 11. Those of you who are in Makodi, you know. I was trekking from around government house to New GRA. When I got to the house, I was so tired. I couldn't close the door. I fell on the floor and slept. That night, I was beaten by scorpion twice. Because of the level of tiredness, I fell on the scorpion, scrubbed it to death. It was in the morning I saw it. I was too tired to stand up to find out what was stinging me. And when I stood up, there's no car. I won't do this anymore. I snapped the scorpion, took to church as a testimony. They shall tread upon scorpions and suffer. You are drunk. Meanwhile, that is not an affliction. That is just reasonable service. I quoted for you Acts 5.41. The apostles were flogged. They were celebrating that they too are worthy to suffer persecution for Jesus. Is that the kind of Christianity we have now? Number seven. They rejected the word. Hebrews 11.27. Moses rejected Egypt. Moses rejected Egypt. He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. He didn't care about the wrath of the king. He was more conscious about seeing him that is invincible. We are friends of the world. It's the world that teaches us how to dress. It's the world that teaches us how to talk. And we think that is part of civilization. We think that is part of being of being social. No. He said, disciple the world. The world shouldn't disciple you. Go into all the worlds and disciple them. Today, most of us are under pressure because of the philosophy of the world system. We don't know the ways of the fathers. The fathers, a one man could stand against the whole generation. Did you not read about Noah? Noah stood against the whole generation. He wasn't troubled. And it's not for one week. For 100 years, Noah was building an ark. They mocked him night and day. It didn't affect him. Today we cave in to every little pressure because we have no stamina in the spirit. Be bold enough to be different. Everybody can think it's stupidity to be a virgin. Be stupid for Jesus. Everybody can think it's foolishness not to take bribe. Be foolish for Jesus. That is what it means to be a disciple. There's a difference between disciples and members. Members come to get things. Disciples come to learn the ways of God. There's a difference. And the trophy of a disciple is that he has mastered the ways of God and he lives it as his lifestyle. 
That's all he's looking for. We don't have people who can reject the word. Number eight. These guys lived a life of covenant. Hebrews 11, 28. Look at what the Bible said. Through faith, he kept the Passover. This is a generation where people are fighting every ordinance of the kingdom. You give offering, they say you are brainwashed. You give first fruit, they say it's, it's obsolete. You give tithe, they say you don't know what you are doing. You go to church, you serve in church, they say you don't know what to do with your time. Go and get a job. And many gullible Christians have gone by the seductive suggestions of the world system because we don't know who we are. I'm not saying don't be relevant to your generation. I'm not saying don't develop yourself. But I am saying God comes first. He says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing shall be added to you. Unless you are saying Jesus don't know what he's saying. And before you talk, they start quoting Japan, Korea to you. You know nothing about the end of time. There is what is called the judgment of the nations. Some of the nations we are using as example, and I'm not referring to this one I called, they may never appear in the new earth. Because when nations are judged, just the way Sodom and Gomorrah vanished, most of the nations that you are using as an example today, they will be destroyed. They will not reappear in the new earth. Because it's not only men that will be judged. Nations too will be judged. And many nations will never be part of God's history. Number nine, these men were workers of wonders. Hebrews 11, 29. Ah, I wish I have time to show you about the wonders of the fathers. It said, through faith, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as a dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. They live a life of wonder as their normal life. And the people of the world thought it was trial and error. When they tried it, they were drowned. So any Christianity that does not have power is a joke. That's why I told you all this talking. Oh, we are talking power. Oh, God, sir, we have not seen power in this generation. No. Don't deceive yourself to start thinking all we need is character. Yes, we need character. And we need it as the foundation of our life. But Christianity without power is not Christianity. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. First Corinthians 4.20 The kingdom of God is not in words. It's in power. These men were carriers of power. They knew what to do. Until today, those who truly follow the path of the patriarch, you can go to a man and tell him you have a crisis. He will tell you, hold my hand. It is well with you. Go. You'll be shocked that an affliction of 10 years will turn around. It's not about drama. It's about what you carry. And if you have it, you know. If you don't have it, you know. You either want to deceive yourself or the people, but if you carry it, you know what you carry. You, you, what you carry is what defines you. It's not a drama, you know. And I can tell you many don't carry it. And the reason we don't carry it is because we have departed from the consecrations of the fathers. Number 10, these men were carriers of the mysteries and the secrets of God. Hebrews 11, 30. Custodians, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they compassed it compassed about it for seven days who told them that walking around the city for seven days and blasting trumpet will collapse it they carry secrets so the things they did may look foolish to men but they were secrets that's why they had results that could not be explained but today we are trying to do it the way the world is doing it the reason is because we are devoid of secrets and finally these men had dominion as their badge everywhere they were went they dominated hebrews 11 32 to 36 he said time will fail me what what then shall i more say for time will fail me to speak of gideon of barak of samson of jephthah of david also and samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, valiant in flight, and they put to flight the armies of the alien. These things are missing in our Christianity, and that is why we cannot take our generation. Are you ready to pray? Can we pray for two minutes? Can we 
pray like a people who know that they have lost their heritage? Can we pray like a people who desire to see the ways of God again? Can we pray like a people who don't want to go join the spirit of just men made perfect without testimonies? It's called the cloud of witnesses. That means anyone who enters that cloud must carry a witness. Paul said, hand forth. Know we no man after the flesh. What is the witness that you carry? Some carry the witness of purity. Some carry the witness of the fear of God. Some carry the witness of obedience. Some carry the witness as custodians of mysteries. Some carry the witness of dominion. Some carry the witness of signs and wonders. What is your witness? For some of them, their witness was the fear of the Lord. But by all means, they made sure they crossed over with the dimension that revealed that they made contact with the grace of God. What is the grace that you are taught? A generation must cry. A generation must survey. He said, who shall stand upon the hills of the Lord? Who shall ascend upon his holy mountain? He said, it's they that have a clean heart. They that have not exalted their hearts in vanity. There is a place to stand where you can give judgment over generation. He said, in the last day, the house of God shall be upon the mountains of God. And men of all nations shall say, let's go to the house of the Lord. For out of Zion proceeds the Lord. How come the house of God has become a social gathering? How come the house of God is no longer a place of prayer where the oracles of God proceed from? A generation must cry. A generation must prevail. A generation must weep. We must become tired of our weakness. We must become tired of our powerlessness. We must become tired of our compromise. And rise up as a people representing God on earth. Jesus called us territorial lampstand, the lamp of oh, Ephesus, secret. the lamp of Philadelphia, oh, the lamp of Thessalonica. We must oh, become lamp, the lamp of Laodosia. Oh, we are the light of the world. Oh, we are a city set upon a hill, but where is our oh, witness? A generation is asking the church a question. Oh, where is your God? Where oh, is your witness? Place. And the Bible tells us the answer oh, is place. that the priest must lie oh, between the altar place. and the pouches oh, and he must place. travel in prayer. He must oh, travel in prayer. Place. He must travel in oh, prayer. Place. We must not take oh, mediocrity place. as our end. Oh, no, place. we are the generation of the emancipators. We are the generation that will bring the Christ to this world. There is a level of witness that we must show. Maracapatona. Maradonia, Balagate, Ezezazina, Maratwatch, 